Good evening. Welcome to the Zoning Board of Adjustment meeting for May 23rd, 2003. Um, tonight we have, I'll start by telling you some of our housekeeping business. If you are here present, to present a petition, you have 15 minutes. If you think it's going to take longer, then ask us ahead of time and the board will decide if you will be allowed extra time. If you are speaking to, for, or against, you will be given five minutes. Okay? So, the first item of business is I would like to take item G out of order because they want to postpone until June 21st. So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? second? Thank you. Uh, any, recuse from that yeah. <laughs> Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank um, you. Sorry, point of order. You have to vote to take it out of order first and then vote on the postponement. Yeah. I know. I apologize. What was your motion? Out of order? To postpone these. Uh, <laughs> we have to go back and take it out of order. Vote to take it out of order before we vote. Oh, okay. Uh, that's what I'm moving. Thank you. Take it out of order. Will you second again? Paul? Second. Thank you. Okay. This is a motion to take it out of order. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? No. Now we need a motion to postpone. So moved. Thank you. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Now we will get down to our regular business. First item of business is the request of Peter Gamble for property located at 170 Aldridge Road, whereas relief is needed to demolish the existing garage and construct a new garage, which requires the following. One, variance from section 10.521 to allow A, seven foot right side yard where 10 is required, and B, 23% building coverage where 20 is allowed. Said property is located on Assessor Map 153, Lot 21, and lies within the single residence B district. This will be presented via Zoom for us tonight. Mr. Campbell, when you have a moment, please unmute and um, begin your presentation. Uh, yes, can you hear me? We are ready for you. Okay. Um, thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank you for all to allow me to uh, join via Zoom. Um, that was the request of last week as well, and I'm, I'm glad to be able to do it so this week. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, the staff at um, uh, Portsmouth, as well as Stephanie um, and other members of the uh, people of uh, Portsmouth to help me in preparing this, this presentation. And uh, so uh, I'll go forward with it. So my name is Peter Gamble and I have resided at 170 Aldrich Road in Portsmouth, New Hampshire for 15 years. Um, I come before you to seek relief to expand my existing 24 by 24 garage. My proposal is to construct a 26 by 30 garage for the second floor for the purpose of creating a more usable space for storage, garage parking, workshop space, and workout uh, recreational space. The current garage was permitted on August 4th, 1978, showing a 12 foot side setback, requiring no variance yet with the advent <coughs> of geo mapping and tax map um, of even up to like about a year ago, um, showing a side foot, a four foot side setback. Um, what I did is I researched uh, the setbacks, um, one through uh, AMBIT engineering to conduct a property line survey. And the most recent uh, survey shows that the setback is actually nine feet. Um, I do know that geo mapping had shown that it was closer. I'd worked with uh, James McCarty at uh, geo mapping at the town to discuss some of the issues. One was that the right of ways on Boss Avenue and also Joffe Terrace were um, in error with the geo mapping. So it prompted me to go ahead and uh, put forth the effort into getting a full survey to try to get some more accurate information. Um, I did that and I also provided um, 
James with all of the survey information that they have so that hopefully some of that stuff gets in, um, updated. I also discussed the project with uh, Paul Grand, the assistant building inspector, and he worked with me when I did my renovations of the whole house um, uh, during the last several years that I've owned it. And in discussion with that, as far as doing a second floor for the garage, there is a re um, requirement of a uh, increased foundation issue. And that becomes part of the, the, the proposal that I have to ensure that um, the uh, foundation around the structure uh, is uh, code compliant. Um, with that, he suggested that um, being able to demo the, the existing building to do what you needed to do for um, a foundation around the existing um, form that's there now would be the best way to be able to make the project happen. Now, I use the word demo, but uh, in reality, I want to actually recycle what's there. Um, I think we can make that happen. There's a lot of um, uh, material there that actually can can go to good use um, with with um, going forward with the project. Not necessarily for me, but obviously for somebody else. The um, the the project that I have is to essentially include a shower and bathroom on the second floor, uh, a workout recreational thing. There is no intentions of creating another living unit. Um, right now, my property is essentially designed as a, a two-family dwelling. Uh, I don't have tenants upstairs. I have four um, adult children that use the upstairs uh, for their living space um, on various times. So there's no, I want to make it clear that there's no intent of trying to make a living space upstairs. Um, I'm seeking the variance under section uh, 10.5.2.1 to allow a side setback of seven feet where 10 is allowed and requiring a 23% uh, building coverage with 20% maximum is allowed. I will say that there is a uniqueness about the property in that it is a corner lot and it does have um, town right of ways on both the front side, front uh, aspect about 15 feet and on the side about seven feet. So with respect to the actual lot coverage, um, those areas are still maintained by me. And if you added those into the um, open space aspect, um, it would probably fall below uh, the 20% required for the ordinance. So with respect to the five, five guiding criteria, uh, the first, the variance uh, will be not be contrary to the public interest. Uh, the project, project uh, is in line with the public interest as the structure was permitted in accordance with the ordinance in 1978. And this new proposal improves upon the current structure as well as uh, show, shows accurate uh, side setbacks. The spirit of the ordinance will be observed. Uh, the spirit of the ordinance will be observed as the project is in line with the current use of the property and consistent with the surrounding properties. As you know, a lot of properties on Aldrich and the area around it have been improved and I think that this would actually fall in line with, with, with many of those improvements that have gone on. Uh, substantial justice will be done. Substantial justice will be done as this proposal will improve upon the existing permitted uh, garage and allow for needed space parking uh, workshop, storage and uh, workout recreational area on, on, the, on this, the, the floor and a half above uh, the existing garage. And the values of the surrounding properties will not be diminished. This project will uh, increase the values of the surrounding properties. Literal uh, enforcement of the provision of the ordinance would result in unnecessary hardship. As this was a permitted garage already in line with the neighborhood improvements and in the spirits of the ordinance, not creating a relief would uh, result in a hardship. Um, I will say that the, the structure itself is kind of unique going in because it's going to be a post and beam type structure. And uh, when you try to insulate a post and beam structure, you essentially put in uh, structural insulation panels around the outside of the frame itself instead of on the inside of the frame. So thus it creates a little bit larger area around the outside. So um, I did provide um, both, um, I see page one is up right now, which uh, shows the, the, the survey that was completed 
and as well as pictures of of the existing house um the surrounding area as far as the the square footage for the lot coverage and also um the permits that were granted back in august 4th of 1978 along with the variance that occurred back then and that variance was because back then this was considered two separate little lots but um they are contiguous so um you know that variance was sort of obsolete because of the contiguousness of the property uh so with that i'd like to entertain any questions anybody may have and i i once again thank you for for taking me via zoom thank you does anybody have any questions for mr gamble I have one question just for clarification. Uh, how is it that the garage is being uh, slightly widened, but the setback from the property line remains at seven feet as it is today? I, I don't understand how that how that happens. Hello? Yep. Sorry, could you hear me? <coughs> want to try again? Yeah, I, uh, can you hear me? Mr. Gamble, there was a question for you. Could you hear it? Hello? Yeah. Let's give it a go. Hold on. Hello? We can hear you. Can you n not hear us? No. <laughs> I have no question. <laughs> I know. It's like if we speak slowly. Um, that, that's fine. Can you hear us? No. Can you hear us? Can you hear me? We can't. Yes. I don't know how to play. We can hear you. Yes. Um, Brian, <laughs> I'm sorry. if you can, if you can uh, weigh in, possibly if there are any. Okay. Issues. Peter, can you hear us now? Yes, I can. Okay. Did you oh, hear okay. my presentation? There was one question for you. We heard your presentation. It was excellent. We have one question for you. Thank you. Hi, uh, this is uh, Mr. Rossi. I wanted to uh, just get clarification on the right yard setback. Uh, my understanding is that the footprint of the garage is being slightly expanded, but the right yard setback was seven feet and remains at seven feet. How is that? So the... Um there's there's uh, two parts to that. One is is that the structure that um, being engineered to be built is a post and beam structure, and with that um, it requires if you want to insulate that everything gets insulated from the outside. And the company that I have that's um, hopefully going to contract to do this job uh, would require that the 26 uh, foot uh, instead of 24 to go to 26, and that does two two things. One is it widens, obviously, um, the outside footprint of the garage, but it also allows for me to have um, a, a little bit more space inside. But when you build a post and beam type structure, uh, the insulation portion of it all goes outside of the structure itself. Um, so the 26 foot allows for that, um, in essence, four inches on each side, but all I had to um, redo the foundation around the existing footprint because we may be able to save the slab that's there now um, but talking to paul uh, garan that if you do actually a, um, uh, a foundation around the existing uh, slab you could actually create the the four foot um, frost wall requirement to actually put a second floor on that thank you thank you I, I understand that my question is just I want to make sure that if we approve a variance that that is adequate to meet your needs and I don't understand why the right yard setback <clears throat> remains unchanged from the original given that the building footprint is expanding or uh, so seven feet is correct that's the setback that you need with the insulation and everything else accounted for hello Mr. Rossi, I think there was an error in the staff memo. The existing is nine feet. Is that right, Mr. Gamble? That's what he just, yeah. That was on the plan. That's on the that's on the plan, but, but in my memo request. it says seven is the existing. So it it is in fact getting two feet wider. I see. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Are there any Hello? other questions? I'm just, okay. 
So, Mr. Gamble, could, this is uh, Beth Margeson. I'm one of the members. Could you explain how you're going to heat this garage? There's a stove. I think we know this. Mr. Gamble, can you hear our question? Hello? <laughs> Apparently not. And this is why we shouldn't do Zoom meetings. Is it now? Is it important? Are we getting help? Mm, I'm not sure. <laughs> Mr. Gamble, can you hear the board? Can you type the question to him, or is that? <laughs> Not ideal, but. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, because we're in webinar mode, I don't think that I can message him. Uh. <coughs> Hello? to go ahead without that answer. I, I, I am, but I, I'm curious. Yeah. Because he made a representation that it would not Hello? put him a dwelling in it. So. See, oh, where's our friend? Um, Rob in production, if you um, have any suggestions on what to do, this would be a good time to help. <laughs> this is the only Zoom, so don't worry. <laughs> Mr. Gamble, can you hear us? All right. I think, I mean, it, even if, it, if I may, even if he can't hear my question, he can't hear our deliberations. Yeah, and so I was going to make the suggestion, if we can't have the discussion, it might be best to post <coughs> this until we can properly have this, have this hearing. Okay. Because even if he watches us, he won't be able to participate. Well, would it be helpful to, um, is it Brian? Is that what you call uh, him? Rob, Rob, Rob is in the back. Would it be helpful to Rob if we were to push us a little farther down the agenda, give him some time to work his magic? He, yes. Yep, he's, he's nodding yes. Maybe rather than postponing this to another meeting, Let's we can just push it down. Let's try that first. Okay, and I will send Mr. Gamble an email. Okay. All right. So I think we need a motion. I will make a motion to take this item out of order. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Thank you. The second item of, of business tonight is the request of Sean Bardung and Michio Bardung for property located at 39 Dearborn audio. Street. Sorry. Whereas relief is needed to demolish the existing shed and construct a two-story addition which requires the following. One, variance from section 10.521 to allow a five-foot front yard where 15 is required. And B, two-foot right side yard where 10 is required. Two, variance from section 10.321 to allow a non-conforming building or structure to be extended, reconstructed, or enlarged without conforming to the requirements of the ordinance. Said property is located on assessor map 140, lot three, and lies within the general residence A and historic district. Is there anyone to speak to this proposal? Good evening. My name is Amy Dutton, and I will be representing Sean Amicio Bardong. I think they're just running a little bit late. Um, I do have two items that were taken off of the plan since you last saw them, so I have a printed set for you. May I approach you? can just pass. Okay. Yes, please. Do you want to just hand them down? Sure. Thank you. Okay, so thank you for seeing us again tonight. Um, I think from reading the application, you saw that we, in our work session with the HDC, they did not love the idea of not necessarily taking down, but converting the 
historic cape into the Gambrel. So we've been to them. Um, I believe this will be our sixth meeting. Um, we've been through five work sessions. So fingers crossed. <laughs> I, th I feel very confident um, that we've we've worked nicely with the board um, and come up with this compromise. So as a general overview, what you are seeing is um, a, are an, an incredible attempt to salvage the existing historic cape with, um, I'm doing that by creating a glass connector to an addition of a colonial, sort of a, sh a very short colonial um, and small colonial that will house the living room and then on the second floor, a primary suite. And then a small addition off the kitchen where there is currently a French door so that we can create a mudroom. So that is the um, overall scope of the footprint. The um, proposed addition will actually also include a courtyard and a lot of which the previous owners were already approved for will be able to finally bring a lot of this to fruition. So um, just in talking about the five criteria, per section 10.233.21, the variance will not be contract, contrary to public interest. Um, the houses very difficult to see from public roadways, which is why I've included quite a few photos of perspective views from uh, Maplewood, Dennett, and Dearborn. The, um, the direct neighbors won't see this home unless they are in a butter, because it's the neighbor sits the house sits about four feet lower than the grade of the surrounding houses. Um, per the spirit of section 10.233.22, the spirit of the ordinance will be observed. This addition renovation will create the courtyard with the granite steps and between the driveway and the house. So the idea is right now it's just sort of like a pea stone. Um, to create a landscaped area where they can retain some privacy and the neighbors can also retain privacy as well. Um, so 10.233.23, substantial justice will be done. The existing home is already on a non-conforming lot with the back, um, but the what I refer to and what is properly referred to as the right side and the back side are both within the three three feet of the property line. Therefore, um, we will not be encroaching any closer on those property lines. No harm will be done to the neighborhood or community should this application be granted. We are in the process of securing a right of way on the right side that um, is the 2.2 setback so that we can get windows on the back, that right side of the house. Um, and per section 10.233.24, the value of the surrounding properties will not be diminished. The neighborhood is a lovely mix of historic homes, primarily colonials with additions to them. We've um, worked with the HTC, like I said, and our solution to have, they really wanted space and air between the house and the connector. And in working with mass and trying to keep the addition the right size while at the same time getting them livable square footage. This is what we have, we are pro proposing tonight. And the last, um, criteria 10.233.25, literal enforcement of provisions for the ordinance would result in hardship. We are, I think we tried really, really hard to save the existing garage shed and 
it's in beautiful shape, but we just, we can't accomplish what we need to on the property at this time um, with that in, it, in its place. So we are proposing to remove the existing shed and garage that literally stands five feet from the property. While we are proposing this goes towards the water, we are staying away as far as possible. Um, additionally, we are also preserving the clear view of the historic Cape. So um, we're not encroaching any closer than the existing uh, house, I should say, the existing historic Cape. The proposed ridge of the addition will be approximately two feet higher than the historic Cape. The historic Cape is, um, I don't expect you to remember as I reviewed the last time, but the, um, the roof rafters sit right on the exterior walls. So there's about four feet of eight foot ceiling height. Um, so you can see the math that I was doing to try to get head height in the addition and still keep it really, really low. Um, so we're only going up to 22 feet seven at the ridge line. And lastly, um, with this, with the, with the house and the, um, all the challenges that it has brought before us, um, what we're really trying to do is, admittedly, love this, love the historic Cape, and um, bring a family back to into Portsmouth that can enjoy it for many, many years to come. So, um, and then I just wanted to point out that, so what you have in your hand of the flyer, the only thing that's different is two things. One is the chimney is removed. Um, that was within setbacks of the five foot setback. Um, and so that has been removed and the window well was expanded by two feet. Um, so that for egress from the basement. So, thank you. Other questions? Oh, I have to open it to the public. Other questions? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I didn't see you. <laughs> I saw you look. I was waiting to see if somebody else wanted to jump in. So, um, a couple of questions. <clears throat> the, and I'll look at the sheet A1, and this has the tax map. The property. There's two Dearborn lanes, and the Dearborn lane that is behind the property, that land between that Dearborn lane and this lot is owned by who? 147? Um, Stephanie, sorry, do you mind turning it on this one? Yes, I apologize. That's okay. <coughs> I think it's just one, one, there we go, thank you. Um, that Dearborn Lane that's above their property line that you're referring to is not there. We don't know why that's there, but it's, it doesn't exist. Is that your question? Uh, yes, but is, so the, all that lot, land there belongs to the other lot, not this lot, correct? It belongs to the lot so 140. 140-7, 140 yes. Okay, mm -hmm. alrighty. So the other question I have is the where exactly is the easement that you'll be getting or you're trying to get? The easement will be on the, the right side. So the front of the property is from Dearborn Lane. So that when you hear me refer to the front of the property, you have to look at it from Dearborn, not from the water. Does that make sense? Yes. So the right side and the back side is where we need relief. And then I believe we're also re asking for relief on the front. Mm -hmm. So how does that, so that's the relief, but how is that an easement? Easement, sorry. Um, the easement that we are um, requesting is that back property 140-7, you are correct. Okay. And why do you need easement for that? I mean, there's five feet in the back, right? No, in the back we there's only two. have two feet two, and in order to have windows, we need five feet for fire code. 
and they would love to have windows. So if we have an easement, we can um, then get windows. Okay, so the um, that fire code regulation doesn't drive a zoning variance requirement, it's just an easement, Stephanie? Okay. Yeah. And we can't apply for that until we have your approval. Okay. Okay. Now I understand. Okay. All right. Any other questions for Ms. Dutton? I'm uh, sorry, now I'm confused a little bit. The easement is not our concern. No, no, no. that's not what I'm confused okay, about. Go ahead. I just I want just to make sure making, yeah. <clears throat> after your statement about Dearborn, I don't know if you said Dearborn Lane or Dearborn Street, but just so I'm absolutely crystal clear, the right side yard uh, is where? Is that that? Is that the? See where Stephanie has Yeah, okay, so that's the right. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I, I had it all kind of turned around in my mind. Thank you. So, that, so you're not alone. <laughs> Other questions for the applicant? Yes, go ahead. And so just one follow-up. I, I looked at this, I asked city staff, but it seems that this new structure does not intrude on the view easement area that between the above. Absolutely correct, yeah. Okay. And that would be the next um, slide. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone in the public who would like to speak in favor of this petition? Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this petition? <clears throat> Hi, I'm Michael Stasek, 31 Dearborn Street. I'm the abutting neighbor. Um, this plan began a few drafts ago as what was ultimately too much change to an historic cape from the 1700s in the historic District A. The current plan is, in my opinion, too much again, but this time at my expense as the main abutting neighbor. Tonight's request came to me in the standard certified letter, including the words 15 foot required setback. I hope you still believe that this protection exists for me as it does with all property owners in this town. Otherwise, why would we have these regulations? I have a very small 20 foot wide backyard at the point where my house meets the fence across from the proposed addition five feet away. I have groomed this yard into a sacred space which visitors often react to in delight as a secret garden. I have worked on it for 38 years and spent important time there. With a 24 and a half foot building looming five feet away, it would no longer be a secret. This proposed addition would block out the sky and light almost completely in that direction, contrary to what's been said. When you combine tall background trees with the proposed addition, this is not an exaggeration, and I would say come see for yourselves. I bet no one has. It would add significant light pollution at night with five windows. It would be so close that I would easily hear their television in my backyard and house if windows were open. And when I looked at their plan, I also saw it looks like there's a compressor that's, um, or some kind of box that um, is also right at the fence there, which could also be something that would produce um, some noise pollution. Um, this total loss of privacy would be a greater hardship for me than the self-inflicted hardship that was created by buying an historic cape on a non-conforming lot with an historic district A. If you compare the lots, mine is far more non-conforming. The massing was previously discussed on an earlier plan for 39 Dearborn at 17%. This number doesn't account for the massing between the houses being so different from the total lot at 39 that reaches all the way to the mill pond. By contrast, I have two sides of the house at the street parking and a narrow corner backyard facing 39 Dearborn. Each time this property is, this has been discussed, there have been confusion regarding front and side directions, as there has been tonight. At each meeting, it gets stated that the neighborhood can't see the property. I can, and I am in the neighborhood. I'm not sure that there's a clear picture of how the two properties relate to each other looking at architect's drawings in this room. I have minimal effect on past discussions and I've never been spoken to directly about any new version of the building plan other than in this room. The latest version was created after I'd made it very clear that I was concerned about impact on my light, privacy, and property value. 
My meticulously detailed and private garden is part of my property value. The HDC on May 3rd was forgiving to an excess of window coverage to honor the proposed water view from the proposed 39 edition. My backyard is my view. After 38 years of Dearborn Street with a 15-foot setback ordinance, I never thought more crowding could happen in this neighborhood. The decades of, afraid to say, police visits to Dearborn Street were usually to settle issues around parking, snow removal, and noise, all brought about from overcrowding. There were other, whoops, there were other issues, but it is a very crowded street. Um, if I'm not gonna be heard on this tonight, I suggest you table this decision and visit my property and actually see why I feel this is a great injustice to me. Finally, the shed that sits at the five foot setback is tied to a variance created with the previous owner with very specific written dimensions and usage for storage only. This is not and never was the footprint of the house. This plan was conceived and mediated by Nick Cracknell in 2015 with the previous owners, Michael Branzell and Helen Long. It was a negotiation we created in writing and filed with the city, including a deed under the supervision of two respected lawyers. I alerted the real estate agent for the current owners before their closing at 39 and said the new owners were fully aware of the deeded agreement. The accessory shed and its use and dimensions were part of that agreement. I never would have signed off on this without that understanding. I emphasize this history to say that the 15 foot setback has always been important to me. The shed today serves as a buffer between the two properties. A 24 and a half foot colonial structure is something very different and something I strongly object to for the reasons I've stated and how unfortunate that my past diplomacy would have landed me in this moment of vulnerability when in 2015, I believe that I had agreed to a plan that included legal protection. In the end, this is a values decision about hardship and interpretation of regulations that are created to protect each citizen of this town. There's also the question of what variances are for. A variance is granted for reasonable use of a property, not maximum. I think some of the earlier proposals for this house came closer to a reasonable use of the available land. Thank you. Does anybody have questions for Mr. Stasek? <clears throat> I have a question. Mm -hmm. I think that in April of 2015, a variance was also granted for a five foot front yard. So that has been five feet since for the last eight years, right? Yeah, but we also agreed to the dimensions, the height, the usage of the shed, and I see that that is mentioned in the um, um, the write-up for this meeting. But a two-story colonial. It's just, it's just a question. Yeah, I no, I know, but, sure I'm, I but I'm saying that. that was an accessory building, right. and this is a 24-foot footprint of house and that's extremely different and it I, I i realized that i agreed to that shed back then but it was a compromise that we came to and i didn't perceive it as something that could ever be perceived as footprint of house and no one's claiming this is footprint of house because we're sort of starting from scratch saying if we level it do we have permission to do this mm -hmm. but in the old days if an abutting neighbor said no my setback means something to me that that meant something and so i'm kind of wondering why am i defending something that is designed to protect me that i thought was still there so if you can clarify for me do I have a setback or, or don't I? You I, have a five foot setback. That's it. And that's it in terms of, yeah. Mm -hmm. Huh. Because that will go with, that's the way it was. That was approved and it's but, but, still approved. But even would, though it has to come to us again because it doesn't meet the 15, it is in fact in place now, as you know. As a shed. Right. Yeah, we don't know about the shed. No, I'm saying it's a five foot. <laughs> I know, I it's know. A five foot setback for a shed. It's not a five foot setback it's, for. A, I mean, do you agree with me that? It's no, not, I agree that it's a five foot setback for a shed. No, you know what? 
this isn't really useful discussion because we don't have inf information that it was five feet with a shed in mind. All we have is that it was five feet was allowed. Um, when this all began, I submitted the letter to David uh, Witham. I understand that, yes. So I'm confused. But it, All we have is it was granted. It doesn't say it was granted for a shed. But I'm going to let other people ask questions. Okay. <laughs> yes. I, I, I don't mean to seem argumentative. I know. I know. This I, is important to you. I understand It is important. That. My question is, is simple. There is a view easement granted. Is mm -hmm. it granted to you? Yes. Okay. And is that easement being honored here? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Other questions? But, I don't have a question, but I do want to let you know that I did drive through and walk the property today. So I, I do have a clear visual image of the property and the and the variance request, just um, so you know. So I, I was meaning actually from my backyard <laughs> that, if it, that the discussion of is light and sky cut out, and I'm saying it is, and the introduction to this proposal said it wasn't, and I, I don't agree. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Should I go away? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> In the nicest way. <laughs> Is there anyone else to speak in opposition to this proposal? Is there anyone to speak to, for, or against this proposal? Very quickly, um, in your packet, you do have this image. Mm -hmm. um, and this is Mike's house here. And the reason why you're seeing this is because you can see how tall his property is in relationship to uh, the Bardong's home, 39 Bar 39. Um, and, you know, the challenge is, you know, we understand that, but the challenge is that we do need to do something on this property to make it a more livable, modern home. And they're at, with this, they're at about 25% lot coverage. They have a huge piece of property, and it's not adding to the claustrophobia that he's referring to on Dearborn. Does that make sense? I have a question for you as long as you're here. The main difference between this proposal and the one that was previously approved the, is that the connection between the antique cape and the new building? Yes. So that it would look like you could separate the old from the new. Correct. Okay. And that Otherwise, was a request Otherwise, the height, the, the dimensions. The height on the original that you had previously mm -hmm. approved was 30, uh, 29 feet. So this is five feet shorter. Okay. So. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Is there anyone else to speak to, for, or against? If not, then the public hearing is closed. And it comes to us. <coughs> what would you like to do? I, I was just pointing out there's a, <laughs> a hand over there. I need. I thought your hand was up first, Jeffrey. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Ms. Morgison. Um, I, this a variation of this application was before us, uh, I forget it was March, April, uh, I think it was February. And um, I did vote against it because I thought that these CAPE, um, the application would have really um, kind of destroyed the CAPE. Uh, from what I understand, it has gone back to the HDC. The HDC is desirous of, of preserving the Cape. And so this is a new application. Um, I, I, you know, I don't want to prevent any kind of um, uh, discussion. Um, I will be in favor of this application. Um, and um, I'm not ready to make a motion right now, but I certainly would like to okay. hear what other people think. The further discussion, motion? I think the uh, original, or, or not an original, but the variances that were approved in 2015 
with regard to the shed. They did have a number of stipulations. However, uh, in 20, uh, let's see, in 2023, in February of this year, a further variance was issued that does not contain those stipulations. So right now, the property has the, that variance allowed uh, with those setbacks without the stipulations uh, that were previously recorded in 2015, just as a point of clarification. <clears throat> Motion? Discussion? I just heard, ML, I want no, you both vote yes, and I said that Everybody yes. right before you oh. sat down. Yes. <laughs> both alternates are voting. Yes, yes. Ms. Marcheson? So I'll make a uh, motion to approve the variance application as presented and advertised. If I get a second, I'll explain why. Second. Okay. okay. So um, the first order of business is that we have to um, find that according to section 10.233.21, uh, granting the variance would not be contrary to the public interest and 10.233.22, Granting the variance would observe the spirit of the ordinance um, that the proposed use does not expressly or implicitly conflict with the purposes of the ordinance provisions, in which case these are um, the setback requirements are for the movement of light and air around the structures. Uh, I find that the this is a very small lot. I did go to look at it. Um, and the structure still has uh, air space in the back and on the side for the movement of light and air um, and uh, emergency egress and whatnot. Um, I shouldn't say whatnot. So another purpose of the ordinance in this case, and this variance is very much driven by the HGC's uh, proposal uh, review of this house in that uh, section 10.1 10.121 number six is the preservation of historic districts and buildings and structures of historic and architectural interest. And this is this variance request is driven by the requirement from the Historic District Commission to preserve the Cape, which is a 1700 structure. The next step is 10.233.23. Granting the variance would do substantial justice. I find that this application meets that. And in that we have to say that the benefit to the applicant should not be outweighed to any harm to the general public. Um, I find that the preservation of the 1700 home is a benefit to the applicant um, and to the, uh, to the public. And then lastly, hardship. Uh, little enforcement of the ordinance would result in unnecessary hardship. And that is 10.233.25. And we have to find that the property has special conditions that distinguish it from other properties in the area. And owing to these special conditions, a fair and substantial relationship does not exist between the general public purposes of the ordinance provision and the specific application of that provision to the property and the proposed use is a reasonable one. Um, I find that this application does have special conditions and part of that is that view easement. It definitely uh, restricts where a structure can be placed on this property um, and so therefore um, putting it more towards the back um, of the property uh, is an appropriate placement for it and um, and I would find that the proposed use is reasonable this is the expansion of a house which is an allowed use in the general residence a district do you have anything to add well said okay, is there any further discussion uh, about was, the motion? Just if, if uh, what surrounding property values mentioned? Just to throw that in there. Oh, right? yes, that's right. Thank you very much, Jeffrey. <laughs> uh, I thought it went away a little too fast. So the fourth criteria, which I skipped, is 10.33.24. <coughs> Graining the variance would not diminish the value of the surrounding properties. I find that this application meets that requirement. We have had testimony from the abutter um, and respectful, I respect your, your views on this. The, the city does not allow for view easements um, on properties and I don't find that that would actually diminish this property. I also find that um, any improvement to a property 
um, generally does rise the does uh, raise the values of surrounding properties. So for all of those reasons, I would uh, move that we request this variance application. Thank you, Mr. Matson. Is there any further discussion? Okay. Um, then we will vote. Mr. Matson. Yes. Mr. Rossi. Yes. Ms. Margerson. Yes. Mr. Mannell. Yes. Ms. Geffert. Yes. Ms. Record. Yes. And the chair votes yes. We are approved. Thank you very much. Also, I think they did a good job of doing the, the mess. Yeah. All right. Um, we think we can get Mr. Gamble on the line, so <laughs> we're going to try this again. Do we want to? Do we have to move to put it back in? We the have agenda to move. To, okay. So I need a motion to put him back to, to, to reopen. reopen the public hearing for one seventy. So moved. Seconded. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. So we are <coughs> at C. New business. Just it takes a second, sorry, to promote him to a panelist to allow him to speak. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Okay. Uh, Perfect. Success. Perfect. I think we I know. Were I, I felt like I was talking to myself. I'm having a hard enough time talking to uh, Italians, so <laughs> thank you. I think we were right at the point where Mr. Rossi had a question. I believe my question was answered. Was answered. Uh, okay. And I think it was Ms. Margison. Okay. So my question, Mr. Ms. Gamble. Ms. Margison. Yeah. Yes, I'm sorry. This is Beth Margison. I'm one of the members. My question was, um, Obviously, the upstairs of this new garage will have to be heated. How will it be heated? So I was going to do um, uh, the split um, type units. So there's going to be one for downstairs and one for upstairs. Uh, so they'll be able to be temp uh, different temperature controlled. Um, that, that's the intent. OK, thank you. Any other questions? And just to clarify, those uh, those mechanical units will not require further uh, variances? No, they don't. They'll actually be able to hook into the, um, the house unit because of the way that um, when I did the renovation, there's an ability to be able to connect into the existing units within the home itself so that won't, won't require anything else. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, is there anyone here to speak in favor of this petition? Is there anyone here to speak in opposition to this petition? Madam Chairwoman, members of the board, my name is John P. McGee, Jr. Most people call me Jack, and I'm here tonight representing Adrian and Andrea DeGraff, who reside at 25 Boss Avenue. That's a direct abutter to this particular property. And Mr. DeGraff is the title holder to the property. Uh, it's our position that this doesn't really meet any of the requirements in this particular area. This is a single family residence, and I believe Mr. Gamble said that he uses it as a, as a duplex. So he's already gotten relief and nonconformity from that in some fashion. But this is not a situation where Mr. Gamble is seeking to add something which modern living requires. He's got a garage. He got a variance to get a garage, or his predecessors did, in 1978. Here, there's a minor footprint change to the garage, but he's going up. He's going up, and this is going to be a huge addition and it's going to be directly in the view of my clients. I don't know how having a workout area with a bath facility is really something that is endemic to that neighborhood. It's something that I would doubt anybody in that neighborhood has, and why the inability to have it represents a hardship 
I, I can't understand. Now, Mr. Gamble, when he made his presentation, talked about hardship, and I believe it's pretty much what he had in his application, saying that little enforcement of the provision of the ordinance would result in an unnecessary hardship, as this was a permitted garage already and in line with neighborhood improvements, and in the spirit of the ordinance, no granting relief, no not granting relief would result in hardship. I don't really understand that. Basically, he got a garage, the property got a garage, and why does he have to go beyond that with a work area? And it does create a danger because while Mr. Gamble has said it is his intent at this time not to use this as living space, he has a bath, you add a hot plate, you put a cot up there, and now you have living space. There's a real danger of that. But it, a workout, a gym, is not something that's a hardship. It's not within the contemplation of the zoning ordinance to allow a huge building to be put in there with a workout area, with a bath. He doesn't need it as a hardship. And Mr. Gamble has said this is going to result in no diminished value to anyone. My clients would disagree. Having this size garage with the potential of what that building has is definitely going to decrease their value and they have as much right to make an opinion of value as anyone who owns property, especially Mr. DeGraff. And Mr. DeGraff strongly believes it will diminish value. Mr. Gamble does not meet the requirements here for a variance. He would like a workout area with a bath. It, it's not a hardship. It's something that the particular area involved, the neighborhood doesn't really demand this to make it livable or anything of that type. Also, the, the plans do, uh, I, I, for those of you who are out there, you'll see that there is a boundary dispute in this particular area that uh, will need to be resolved. It, it will, if the DeGraffs are successful, it will reduce the area of Mr. Gamble's lot. I understand that in the ordinary course, if, if you have a deeded line, you're not going to be concerned with adverse possession and that type of thing, but it, it's something because Mr. Gamble was talking about how, how he had had this surveyed. And I, I just didn't want you to think that the survey didn't, didn't expose certain issues. It did. So based on that, we would respectfully ask you to deny the variance. There are no grounds. It doesn't meet their criteria at all. And there is no basis. Now, another thing that I would just add as, as a question, because this is a single family residence. I understand it's a duplex. And based on things I've been reading recently in the Portsmouth Herald about last month's uh, Board of Adjustment meeting, isn't there a new ordinance which basically says that if you're a non-conforming use, you have to get a variance before you can get a variance? If that's the case, then the issue arises whether or not we're one, sh we're one step short of a variance needed in order to proceed. Uh, I haven't examined the particular ordinance, but based on what I read in the newspaper about uh, Oriental Gardens and the denial of that particular um, uh, trailer at that time, or mobile home, manufactured housing, it, I believe that might be an issue. And uh, I would hope that the planning department did examine that issue and is able to speak to it. Perhaps I'm wrong in that, I don't know, but uh, I did want that to bring that to your attention. So thank you very much. We appreciate your consideration. Thank you. Are there any questions? Yeah, no, I'm sorry. Could you clarify, is your client and a butter on the right side property line if you're or the rear at, property line? Right. If you're looking at 170 Aldridge Road front on, my client is the building to the immediate left. From Boss Ave. I'm sorry? On Boss from Ave. From Boss Avenue. On Boss Avenue, yes. yes. Right. Not from Aldrich. So uh, from Aldrich, your client is behind 
this house. Side by Correct. side, really. It's side by side, if you look at it. On Boston Ave, they're side by side. Yeah, Boston, it, it faces more towards Aldridge. It doesn't, it, it's not back to, it's side by side. And the rear, so it, for the purposes of our calculations of dimensional standards and setbacks and so on and so forth, your client, I think, because this is an all, I just want to be sure I understand, because this address is 170 Aldrich, Aldrich is considered the front street, the, and the therefore, front yard. Yes. therefore, the corner the secondary. therefore, the property line between 170 Aldrich and this gentleman's client's uh, property is what we would consider the rear, which yeah. has a 46 foot. Uh, uh, setback correct yeah which is in compliance and would remain in compliance that would but that increase in size affects my client's lot just as much as a setback does and the topography uh, of this neighborhood is your client's lot at the same level as the lot uh, for the applicant or is it elevated it's higher. My client's flight is higher. I see. Thank you. Mr. Mano. Um, Mr. McGee, is that? Yes. Um, you said earlier that what he wants to do is not a hardship because it's not modern living and things like that. Wouldn't putting your own workout space in your own, you know, changing room as a bathroom be considered modern living? I'm saying that putting a much larger building up and making it workout space is something that is not in the order. It's, it's not what I would consider a deck or something that you need to do to make that building or house give it a modern amenity that would be expected to exist in that neighborhood. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Okay. So if he can make him if he can do a workout room within his house, sure. But he's not. He's building an extra building which is very large and and giving it a bathroom and shower area I assume and Basically, he's saying, I'd like to build a building. He doesn't give any reasons for a variance. He really doesn't, not legitimate reasons. So your objection is for against the two-story nature of that, the garage? The two-story nature of the property. He's got a garage now. It's one in, it's a little over one story, perhaps. But this is not that. This is big, tall. Correct. Okay. Thank you. I do have one. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no. Go ahead, Ms. Marcheson. I think I saw your hand so, first. Um, it, I don't know how much bigger it is, how much taller it is than the current structure, because the current structure appears to be under 24 feet. This is 24 feet. However, it is still 11 feet below the maximum height allowed under zoning. Mm -hmm. It's still bigger than what is there now, it's and what's there now is a two-car garage, which you would expect to find in that neighborhood. But you know what? You wouldn't expect to find a two-story garage in that neighborhood that has a workout room on the second floor. You really wouldn't. I have a, a point of order. Um, I'm pretty sure during normal previous meetings we uh, only go back and forth with the applicant rather than the public comment section. I'm not no, you're partial right. one way or the other, but it seems tonight is you're right. different. Okay. Okay. But I oh. keep seeing... <laughs> it's still informative, but it's just different than yeah. <clears throat> uh, I wasn't sure. Oh, he the... is still in the public comment section. Yeah, I mean, we ask questions during public comments. Yeah. Right? yeah. Okay. Yes, because he was up first to propose, and then he came back. Okay. Right? Uh, we do ask during public comments. We do. Okay. Yes. Are there more questions? If yes. not, we can. <laughs> it's, it's when the public hearing is closed, okay. and we yes. try to yes. have a colloquy right. with somebody. Yes. We can't do that. We can't yeah. do that. I, I, so can you clarify for me, since the rear yard setback is not changing, it's at 46 feet, how does this variance affect the uh, alleged property border dispute? I, I, don't, I don't understand what that coverage, dispute is. Coverage, lot coverage. Lot coverage. It'll be a significant reduction in 
the area 170 if the issue if, if you have seen this property you can you see the area that's in dispute on the left as you're looking front ways at 170 Aldrich. Mm -hmm. it comes down quite a bit mm. and i'm not sure if mr gamble's plan shows that or not the one that he submitted Anything else, Mr. Rossi? No, I'm, I'm finished. Thank you. Good. <laughs> Anything else? I just want to ask. Okay. With respect to the boundary dispute, is that being settled at the time? It hasn't been successfully settled at this point in time. Okay. Can you we've, we've had, I, I did have a discussion with Mr. Gamble, and uh, we're, we're still unresolved at this point. Okay. Okay, so there is no court action with respect to this? Uh, not at this moment, no. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there anyone else to speak to, okay. for, or against? Come on up. I'm Andrea DeGraff. I'm very emotional about this, so forgive me. This is our home. Mr. Gamble came to us about a year and a half ago and said that he'd looked at a tax map and realized that perhaps there was a differential between our property lines and he'd like to put up a new garage. And we said, well, let's look into it. You know, we're neighbors. Over the last year and a half, he's had his property surveyed and he claims that in spite of us having a retaining wall built back in the early 1950s that goes with our house, and a wall that follows through with a full fence down his property, the side of his property, the back, that he actually owns that. And he owns almost 12 feet in that goes right beside our house. And so that's why we're in dispute of this currently. And we've been talking to him and negotiating with Mr. McGee. However, this garage is huge, what he wants to put up is as big as, if not bigger than his current home. His current home has two units to live in. And as you know, Portsmouth is a big hit for people with their Airbnbs and come and you can have events, you can, you know, entertain. And this upstairs room looks to be a beautiful room for entertaining. It even has a balcony off one side. Most garages don't have a balcony. Most garages don't have a full bathroom. Most garages don't have a full room upstairs with counters and storage down the side. I don't believe this is a workout room. I believe it's an intent to be used for something else. And it is massive. It's very much larger than the other garage. As you suggested, it was a 24 or is currently a 24 by 24 garage. He would like to make it a 30 by 26 garage, I believe, and to go up by, well, now, it, I, I'm not sure the height. I think it's about 18 feet tall. But if you look at the pictures that you have in your packet, that is a beautiful building. It looks like something out of HGTV that's getting turned into, readily turned into two more living spaces. And you know here in Portsmouth how easy that is to do. And nobody knows and nobody talks about it. They just lease it out silently. We've tried to talk to Mr. Gamble about the boundary dispute. It's going to be at least 650 to 750 square feet that's in dispute. And he says if you add in the imminent domain that the city owns, the 15 feet along the side in the front yard, then he has more than ample coverage. However, not adding that in, he's already beyond the percentage required for a variance or, you know, up until the variance is acceptable. When the initial variance was put in place in 1978, that was for a two-car garage with a half story above it. It was 24 by 24. It wasn't heated. It didn't have a bathroom. And it had setbacks that were seven feet. Now that is another line that's also in dispute between the surveyor and the other type of surveying he had. All these boundaries are in dispute in our area. 
you'll see several surveyors going round and around for all the people who buy new properties and they're trying to figure out where their real boundaries are. So I would like you to consider before granting this variance, there are going to be two full buildings side by side and all it's going to take is plugging in an air fryer, a microwave, one of those ranges, you just plug it in on top, it's a living space. And moreover, it's not a hardship to not have a full second floor on your garage with a full bathroom and a balcony. I know, I just, I'd really like you to consider that and thank you very much for your time. I appreciate you being here on the board. Thank you. Thank you. I want to make sure you all see that there are other letters from neighbors at your places tonight. Yeah. Okay. Is there anyone else to speak to, for, or against <clears throat> this petition? Last call. Okay. Then the public hearing is closed. And it comes to us. I'll just start with a comment. Um, I, I definitely, as soon as I looked at this project, one of the first things that crossed my mind is whether or not this would be living space above. Um, my concerns are somewhat alleviated by a couple of different other factors outside of this board. Is one, uh, anything that actually gets constructed there uh, with, with permitted work would, would be, uh, it would trigger any sort of, if, if uh, when the building inspector went there, it would trigger something. Uh, that require uh, coming back before this board or another board uh, if there were any attempt to, to make it living space. Um, but that was definitely something that, that crossed my mind. Thank you for bringing that up. Yep. Anybody? I also had the first impression, uh, actually a lasting impression, that is too closely uh, similar to living space. That, could be utilized that way. Yes. And I too share those concerns. I, um, I will not be supporting the application. I, I am concerned about the possibility of converting living space on the second floor. Um, I'm also concerned about the um, taking attorney McGee at his, at his faith value, which he, I'm, you know, I will. Um, if there is a possible boundary dispute, I am concerned about the building coverage. I think in general the building coverage is fairly minor, 23%, but depending on, you know, I feel like the applicant needed to um, um, prove that. So I, I, on the whole, I, I don't think I will be, so I will not be supporting this application. Anybody else? Would anyone like to make a motion? I will make a motion to deny the variance. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Somebody seconded? Second. That was Ms. Record. I'm going to uh, support my motion by uh, referring to 10.23321 and 22, and that is uh, how does this variance comport with the spirit of the ordinance or not. Uh, and this is in an area that is uh, single family uh, dwelling uh, and the design of the particular design that was presented to us uh, is not consistent with continuing to use the property as a single family dwelling. And on that basis, I believe it fails the test for uh, observing the spirit of the ordinance. And I will leave it at that. That's our, I only have to address one of the. That's right. Yeah, that's, that's right. All you need. That's right. Anybody second would like to add anything to the motion? Nothing that hasn't been said, which is okay. the concern about it being used for living space. I'm going to support this motion because I think that what's being asked for is really incredibly minor. 
It was a nine foot yard, now it's a seven right, foot right yard. The building coverage is less than 3% larger. The height of the building hasn't changed. And I'm not willing to presuppose that he's not going to follow what he's told us tonight. Um, and as Mr. Matson points out, one, I will assume that he is an honest man and would need to go through the city to change the use. So this just seems like a pretty minor request to me. In a very architecturally grand package, perhaps, so it stands out. But Aldrich, I think, can handle this. There's lots of houses, and there are 46 feet in the backyard. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mantle. I agree with your sentiments because on face value, it is a minor request. Um, height, we don't do anything about um, unless it affects light and air and circulation. Um, and it is a minor request, but I can't support it because we have two property lines that are in dispute. And I would rather, if those things were not in dispute or not subject to legal action, I would have no problem with this. But because they are, no, that has to come first. Because we don't know, because the property lines are in dispute, whether it's 22% coverage, 27% coverage. So that's an unknown for me right now. Okay. And right now it is a little ask, I get that. But I can't support it right now. Is there any further discussion? Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I'm Sorry. always looking yeah, the wrong way. <laughs> so I would just sort of flesh out what I was saying. I feel like this, garage is a little bit more than accessory building or structure. I, 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 so in that way, I also think it does not meet the, the uh, requirements of the ordinance. I would like to make one other comment before we vote, and that is that uh, the attorney speaking in opposition referenced the trailer uh, home case that we heard, I believe, last week, was it only? Yes, it was last uh, week. And last specifically, week. I'm the one who made the motion on that. That was specifically to address that property and that property alone. It was not a general comment about how to apply our zoning ordinance. Uh, so I don't want that to stay on the record as being a precedent that carried over to this case. Thank you. And I just want to add one thing, that while there is discussion about disputed property lines, there is no legal action at this point. It is a neighborhood Mishap? I don't know. Okay, so the motion is to deny. A yes vote denies the application. Mr. Matson? No. Mr. Rossi? Yes. Mi oh my God, I'm losing my mind. Ms. Morgison? <laughs> yes. Mr. Mantle? Yes. Ms. Gefford? No. Ms. Record? Yes. And the chair votes no. So. The garage is denied. Okay. So now we are getting back to E. The request of Thomas Rooney, owner, for property located at 29 Spring Street, whereas relief is needed to install two mechanical units in the rear of the primary structure which require the following. One, variance from section 10.515.14 to allow a seven foot side yard where 10 is required and B, four foot rear yard where 10 is required. Said property is located on assessor map 130, lot 21 and lies within the general residence A district. Is there anyone to speak to this proposal? Yes. Hi. Uh, Madam Chairperson, members of the board, thank you. Uh, my name is Tom Rooney. I'm at 29 Spring Street and have been there for a little over 20 years. Um, so as you just described, what we're looking to do is install two heat pumps to uh, supplement the heating and cooling in the house. Um, the lot has a rear setback now of six, uh, six feet where um, 10 is required and the side we're going to B 
be uh, seven feet where 10 is required. <clears throat> Uh, so the house is positioned on this lot with the rear and left side setbacks of approximately six feet on either side uh, with solid fences at the property lines. Uh, positioning the outdoor heat pumps on the right rear, on the right side of the property is adjacent to our patio and also right where uh, the fence gate comes out. Uh, the desired location shown cannot be seen by abutters as they're below the five foot uh, fencing. Um, the location is also out of any public view as it is screened by the fence and then by the house from the front. Um, and the criteria, the variance, um, the variance is not contrary to the public interest in that this location will have no public view of the heat pump uh, mechanical units screened by the five foot fence. And, um, and each of our properties kind of back up. Uh, so this area is uh, more than 50 feet from any of the neighboring homes. Uh, the variance is consistent with the spirit of the ordinance um, as noted in item one and uh, no view from the neighbors. Uh, substantial justice will be done as the work will allow the upgrade of the existing mechanical systems in the house without impacting the neighborhood. Uh, variance will not diminish the value of the surrounding properties as the units are not visible to the abutters or from the street. Um, and then the special condition of this property is the existing non-conforming rear and side setback um, and location of the units on the right side would be adjacent to the patio. Um, and again, out uh, where the fence gate is. Um, and it's, it would be then visible to both the butters and from the street. And on the left side of the home, again, we'd be within the setback and that is, would be visible from the uh, abutters on that side. So <clears throat> I think it's fairly straightforward in the back, the two units, there's two windows back there, so they'd be in between the two unit, uh, in between the two windows. Um, there's, there's a fence gate right about where the, the side of the house comes back, and that's where, if we put it on that side, it would be kind of right in, next to the patio and next to the fence gate. Um, and again, there's fencing down the left side of the home as well as the rear. <clears throat> and then maybe you want to go to the next one, Steph. And thank you, Stephanie, for all your help. Uh, so this is looking, so it's, it's a little bit of an alley there. That's the fence on the right, and that's the gate that we're looking at right before the house starts. Um, that's just an example of what one of these units looks like. And then I think there's one more picture. Yes, yeah, so this is the the patio um, so you can see where that little alley is if we brought it around it's kind of next to the patio and would it also be right where the the gate opens up and this is this final picture is from the uh, rear abutter um, and you can that set the units would be below that fence line thank you would you like to speak to the criteria uh, did I? I, I, think I thought did. I did. You did? did. Okay. Yeah. Nothing to add. Okay. Um, is there any, are there any questions first? May I just make yes. a point of clarification? There was an error in the, the notice that was sent um, to the paper and to the abutters. Um, it stated that the units would be located behind the garage when in fact it is behind the primary structure. Uh, there is a, an example motion in your memo um, should you wish to approve it, that just stipulates that where the units will be located as part of the approval um, and as part of what's presented in your materials and by Mr. Rooney. Okay. So that would go along with the motion. Yes. Okay, we yes. can go ahead now. Okay, if there are no questions, then I will open it to the public. All right, thank you. Is there anyone to speak in favor of this petition? Is there anyone to speak in opposition to this petition? Is there anyone to speak to, for, or against? If not, then the public hearing is closed. Mr. Mantle. Uh, I make a motion to uh, approve the request as presented with the following stipulation that both mechanical units are located in the rear of the primary structure as indicated in the applicant's submission materials. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Okay. okay. Mr. Um, going through this, the request is small. 
Um, because of the current location of the primary unit, I believe the hardship exists because I don't see um, where else they could put it other than behind the garage, but that you're not doing heat for the garage, you're doing for the primary house. The variances are one foot uh, and two feet from the side yard. And like I said, the house is already placed in a non-conforming spot on the lot. Um, to the criteria, 10.233.21, granting the variance would not be contrary to the public interest. Um, it would not be contrary to the public interest. The public won't even know we granted the variance because everything will be behind, hidden behind the um, primary structure. Granting the variance, 10.233.22, granting the variance would observe the spirit of the audience. I believe it would. Dot two three, granting the variance would do substantial justice. I also believe that's true. Um, this is New England, and we, gee, in 16 months, we've probably gotten at least 20 to 30 heating units on small lots where the lot is non-conforming, where the house is put as non-conforming, and they need that extra foot. Uh, 10.233.24, granting the variance would not diminish the values of the surrounding property. I do not believe that. 10.233.25, literal enforcement of the provisions of the ordinance would result in an unnecessary hardship. <coughs> the property has special conditions that distinguish it from other properties and areas, and owing to these special conditions, a fair and substantial relationship does not exist between the general public purposes of the ordinance provision and the specific application of that provision to the property and the proposed use is a reasonable one. Well, the proposed use is definitely a reasonable one. Um, and as I said, it's already non-conforming, especially where the location of the house is on the lot. Um, and for these reasons, I made the motion to approve. Does the second have anything to add? Yeah, I'll just add that uh, the benefit to the applicant uh, is not outweighed by any harm to the public. Um, and uh, adding to the unique conditions, uh, this is also an undersized lot in addition to the placement that uh, Mr. Mantle mentioned. Um, and then the, the purpose uh, in terms of preserving air, light, and space is, is uh, being maintained. So uh, for those reasons, I second. Okay, thank you. Is there any further discussion? Okay. If um, not, we will... Call for roll call. Ms. Record. Yes. Ms. Geffen. Yes. Mr. Mano. Yes. Ms. Margerson. Yes. Mr. Rossi. Yes. Mr. Matson. Yes. And the chair votes yes. You may be cool this summer. <laughs> so. It's up to you. I think he's on smile. Did we vote? Did we vote? This was we did we did right okay um so the next item is 18 walden street and there was a request to go at the end of the meeting but um mr day but mr day is here so we can continue in order or postpone as requested and you can let me just a second Second. Uh, yeah. If it's not a motion. Yeah. Uh, to me, it makes sense to proceed as um, as scheduled uh, okay. due to the fact that Mr. Day is here. Good. Okay. So then that is there's a second. All in favor? Uh, there doesn't need to be a motion. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I thought that's what this little note okay. said. Sorry. Okay. Nope. <laughs> Mr. Day, come forward. <laughs> Good evening, board members. Um, thank you for uh, allowing me to speak now. Um, I'm coming from work, so that's why I requested to speak last tonight. So I appreciate um, your accommodations. Uh, my wife and I are the residents of 18 Walden Street, and our main reason for requesting 
to put in a ductless AC unit is because we have an eight-month-old child, and in today's world in New England in the summers, it can get very hot. Our house especially sits in an area where the sun hits on our house all day long, which heats the house up more, and it can be very uncomfortable through the night even from the heating of the house from the sun. Um, so that is our main reason why we're uh, asking for this. So we have um, <clears throat> where we are proposing to put the unit, there is a setback of seven feet where 10 feet is required. Um, and that's the side of the house you'll see um, through some photos that we have of our house. that there's some, there's some places where you can put the unit, right? Um, the back of the house, which is directly on the street, it is not a private street, it is a public street um, with minimal traffic, but we couldn't put the unit on that back of the street because it would hit the street. Um, we talked to a contractor about putting the unit under our deck and our house is, Oceanside, so December we had that massive um, tide. That tide got up into our basement. We had four inches of standing water in our basement. So putting an AC unit under our deck in that area is probably not the safest way um, to go about uh, adding an AC unit to our house. So we came with the idea that our um, AC unit should be placed on the side where you see this yellow uh, marking on the side of our house. Right here. Let me see there. Oh, just don't mm -hmm. touch the screen. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where the the uh, setback is in place. So um, we've spoken to our neighbors um, that live directly there, and they were okay with us putting it in that area. It doesn't affect their view. Um, it doesn't obstruct any views. Um, they don't spend any time there. That's their driveway. So uh, we've spoken with them. Um, <clears throat> in terms of uh, the, propo the proposal uh, does not diminish any property value um, to our neighbors or us. We actually view it as it adding value to our house um, in the modern uh, times. And then um, in terms of little enforcement of the provisions of the ordinance and, with, and how um, results in any unnecessary hardship, we've I've mentioned that quite a bit with the only place being on the side of the house. Excuse me, I'm looking through the rest of my notes. I've been scoring scorecards all night. A little bit of a headache after punching so numbers all day. Time. And then the last, the last part I'd like to talk about is just the low visible area. Um, you know, it's a dead end street. There's not a lot of traffic where we live. Um, and so we don't have a lot of people. Most people are walking along Newcastle Avenue, right? It's a very popular area. We understand that we get a lot of tourists in the area for that iconic shot uh, where our house sits. And we feel that that area where our AC unit sits is discreet and out of the way of any views and photos of that. If anybody wanted to see that uh, beautiful Portsmouth um, historic district uh, view. That's all I have. Okay. Are there any questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I will have to open this to the public now. <laughs> Is there anyone here to speak in favor of this petition? Is there anyone to speak in opposition to this petition? Is there anyone to speak to, for, or against? Then the public hearing is closed. I would like to make a motion to approve the variance as presented and advertised. Okay, is there a second? Second. second. Give it to Mr. Your turn. <laughs> All right, Mr. Ross. Okay, going through the uh, criteria for variance, uh, granting the variance would not be contrary to the public interest uh, and it would observe the spirit of the ordinance. Uh, 
the spirit of the you know the use of the property as a residential use is not changing that's the spirit of this zoning ordinance uh, this 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 particular zone uh, it is not uh, running contrary to preserving the historic character of the property uh, and therefore I would say for those reasons it observes the spirit of the ordinance it would do substantial justice uh, there is no loss to the public uh, in allowing these air conditioning units to be placed there uh, at the same time it is a great benefit to the homeowner to be able to enjoy the property according uh, in accordance and uh, with uh, contemporary uh, standards of comfort there would be no diminishment of the surrounding properties uh, the unit will really not be visible uh, in a substantial way uh, from any of the surrounding areas and it will not impact the general feel and look of the community and literal enforcement of the provisions would result in an unnecessary hardship um, again I think the special condition in this property and in this on this street in general uh, the properties are very closely uh, packed it's a densely settled area and any upgrade to the HVAC system to meet contemporary standards would require uh, a, a variance one way or the other uh, I did look at the property and uh, indeed the back of the property any, any place where these units could go uh, there's an overhang of a deck uh, and so it's not a reasonable place uh, to put these units uh, therefore you, you do require a variance and for those reasons I uh, support the application okay, does the second have anything to add no okay Thank you. if there's any further discussion no I did meet your baby uh, congratulations she's very cute Thanks. yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay then I will call for a vote mr. Rossi We'll just mix it up. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, Mr. Matson. Yes. Ms. Record. Yes. Ms. Geffert. Yes. Mr. Mannell. Yes. And Ms. Margeson. Yes. And I will vote yes as well. So you're all set. Okay. One H. The request of Carl Krukoff, owner, for property located at 3360. Lafayette Road, whereas relief is needed to convert a two-bay two garage into a third living unit, which requires the following. One, variance from 10.521 to allow 8,002.5 square feet per dwelling unit, where 15,000 square feet is required. Two, variance from 10.331 to allow a non-conforming use to be extended or enlarged without conforming to the requirements of the zoning ordinance. Three. Variance from section 10.440, use number 1.51, to allow three dwelling units where one is permitted. Said property is located on assessor map 297, lot 12, and lies within the single residence B district. You may come up. Hi, good evening. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a Hi. brand new homeowner, and uh, this is my first time here. So okay. We won't bite. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, my mom I brought for moral support <laughs> um, so I just described the project to you guys uh, conversion of an attached two bay garage of approximately 676 square feet into an additional living space um, we wouldn't be changing the footprint of this structure at all we would just be converting the garage doors in the front um, to two uh, a double window on the left side and then a single window on the right and then uh, side the left side of the uh, the lot itself or the garage itself would have a entryway and then a rear entrance into the backyard um, we would be uh, installing um, a kitchen a two bedroom a two bath or one bath um, and um, part of the living space inside would be raised a little bit for the plumbing situation so um, updated uh, electrical plumbing sheetrock flooring um, right now the description of the land use is uh, SRB zoning um, provide areas for single-family dwellings low to medium densities approximately one to three dwellings per acre um, compliance of the requirements uh, uh, this request would benefit 
public interest in aiding the expansion of residential living space for Portsmouth families or prospective families looking to move into Portsmouth during a time when rental inventory is at historic lows. Um, so notes that I had taken based off of my research, um, NH statewide housing assessment for 2023 uh, showing that almost 60,000 units are needed in New Hampshire right now um, within the decade. Right now, as of April, uh, we're short of 23,500 units. Uh, when I first got here to Portsmouth, I was actually with my mom um, and my sister, and we actually lived upstairs, the upstairs unit of that duplex. Um, that was the best way that we could enter Portsmouth at the time. Um, I'm hoping that I can provide that for somebody else in the future. Um, as far as uh, maintaining the spirit of the SRB zoning ordinance, um, providing continued residential usage, um, still maintaining low density area, not changing anything in the backyard, so that will be um, used by the tenants and myself who live there right now. Um, and then um, this request provides substantial justice to the variant used by indicating conforming to surrounding developments. Uh, right now, Weatherstone uh, condominiums, which is a 20 unit uh, condominium uh, complex is in the rear of, of the property and, and abutting to the back. And then Juniper Commons condominium, a 50 unit complex with SRA zoning is uh, to the left side of, of the lot as it stands right now. Um, across the street in, in, um, is uh, Hillcrest Estates as well, which is another 190 mobile home um, complex. Um, this request will not diminish the value of the neighboring properties as the construction will not substantially alter the appearance uh, of the building. Um, in fact, it'll improve it in my opinion um, and uh, provide additional low density housing for residents, uh, which would be in alignment with neighboring communities. Um, enforcement of this current zoning would result in unnecessary hardship. I, I, I have to be honest, I misinterpreted <laughs> what this meant initially. Um, I, I thought I was supposed to um, demonstrate a hardship for the public, the general public. Um, myself, I, I would suppose, um, the idea had come uh, originally from my brother who was looking to move into this area. So the initial intent, intent for this was to provide him with some housing to bring him uh, from Connecticut where he resides okay. um, into the community. Um, is there any, anything else I should be, <laughs> sorry. Are there any questions? Any further questions? Any questions? Okay, thank you. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry you've got to raise your hand. <laughs> <No, I>, um, <laughs> so a couple of questions. The current garage is attached to the house. Can you walk from the house into the garage? No. You cannot, okay. So um, since you're eliminating your garage, what are your plans for parking? Good question. I meant to <laughs> bring that up. So right now, um, I uh, measured out the driveway. It's 24 feet wide by 60 feet deep. Um, after speaking with Stephanie, um, she had said that the size for each parking space should be around eight feet wide, eight and a half feet wide by 19 feet long if I'm doing a diagonal. So the idea would be to uh, create four spaces, which is um, based off of my calculations of each unit. So se uh, 750, I guess under 750 square feet per unit requires um, only one parking space. The, the second unit, the one that I reside in at the moment, um, is uh, based off the tax card 1038. So it's slightly higher. And Stephanie had told me that I needed to round up because you can't have half a park, uh, half a car. <laughs> so, um, so four spaces would be needed total. Um, and we would have plenty of that if we did diagonal parking on the right hand side of the driveway. Um, and we'd still be about 30 feet off the road if we packed them in there. But I, I don't see any reason to do that. How would you maneuver the cars? Um, so 24 feet wide, I guess I, I'd measured my own car itself. It's not quite the 19 feet, so I would assume the first car nearest to the to the building um, would probably have the toughest time, but they would back out and then pull pull into Lafayette Road. 
Okay, thank you. And just one follow comment. So your support for making this multi family is the Hillcrest Estates, but that is already zoned general apartment mobile home. And unless I'm reading this wrong, Juniper Commons is actually gateway. Uh, the, the zo you mean the zoning the type zoning. Is, is slightly different? The zoning. Okay. Yeah, it was based off of the color coding that I was looking at on the on the map. So uh, I might have misinterpreted it, but um, I guess my primary use in, in that respect would just be the condominium complex behind me, which is still zoned SRB zoning. That's Weatherstone condos. Yep. But the rest of that area is single family homes. Uh, on the other side of um, my abutting, correct. Okay, thank you. Yep. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone to speak in favor of this petition? Is there anyone to speak in opposition to this petition? Is there anyone to speak to, for, or against? Okay. Then the public hearing is closed. Uh, could somebody clarify what actually is the zoning for Juniper Commons? Give me one second. Because I couldn't tell from the colors whether it was gateway or general it's business or. And also just to confirm that they're in a butter um, in addition to the type of zoning because it looks like there might be a thin yeah. spot in between, but I'm not sure if it's a overlay. I draw that radius. I guess that's, while that's being looked up, I'd make a comment. Um, you know, normally we're, we're very uh, careful about in our single family uh, districts um, kind of uh, adhering to that. And, you know, with the ADU uh, statewide um, criteria, um, we've been seeing more uh, of uh, essentially two dwellings in the single family zone. Um, I would say that for this particular lot, uh, if there were ever a good place to add some some gentle density um, this this would be it because it's a it, uh, really positive point that the actual structure would not be changing um, the footprint uh, the size um, and uh, just by the the nature of the the size of the dwelling it would um, be in the spirit of uh, the ordinance in terms of uh, 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 housing providing housing types that are much needed um, and I, I do think that the um, independent of the other abutting lots, uh, the uh, another direct abutter in the single family residence is the 20 um, condominium unit uh, behind this applicant. Um, yes, those are my thoughts at this point. Okay. <coughs> um, so the Juniper Commons. Uh, Plot is actually split zoned, so it's half um, natural resource protection and half G1. G1, okay. Yeah, so, so the portion where the buildings are is G1. And, and so that isn't a butter? A direct butter? Um, it's across the street. Um, behind, there's another set of I can't pull up exactly what it is, but um, 3370 Lafayette Road is more on Weatherstone Lane, um, is a direct butter, and it's in the same district as uh, the applicants. And this lot uh, in question is ge general residence, no, single residence SRB. B? Yes, I think it was in this B also. Single residence SRB. SRB. Yeah. Correct. B. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And to the other side of him on Lafayette Road are the units that we approved last year. The large, isn't this where the large condo units are that went up overnight? Yes, not far away. Right. Uh, on the same it's block, right I guess you call it. Right between them and Ocean Road. Right. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, regardless of the different uh, various types of zoning that are in the area, I mean, if you inspect the property, uh, clearly, you know, Juniper Commons is uh, obviously visible from this property, uh, and the Weatherstone con Weatherstone condos are actually in the same zone. It seems to me that the that the strict application of the ordinance in this particular case for this property really wouldn't serve a purpose because the, this area is developed in that that manner anyway. Yes, <laughs> I, have, I have a question for staff to for the Weatherstone. Are the was that that is single residence B? Or A, I forget. Yep. Um, but was it a planned unit unit development? I know that it was. Um, it's really quite old. It's like over forty years old. But oh, I don't have not. the history on that. I would I would have to look, pull the file, and look. Okay. Well, I I mean I will say I will. Um, not be supporting this application um, because of the third dwelling unit. I I think on this property it's quite problematic. Um, I don't. You know, I I appreciate the sentiment behind trying to create more dwelling units, but I think on this lot it's really quite problematic. I don't find that there's any hardship um, for this property. Um, having more than three dwelling, having more than you know. One dwelling unit is something that generally we take very seriously, and you know, notwithstanding our vote last week, but it's not something that I will support. Discussion, a motion. I will try a motion to approve as presented and advertised. Thank you. Is there no? Is there a second to the motion? I'll second. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Rossi. Okay. Hold on, let me get my little cheat sheet out. Granting the variance would not be contrary to the public interest, and granting the variance would observe the spirit of the ordinance could be taken together. And in that sense, um, the public interest is served by expanding the moderately priced uh, housing stock uh, within, uh, within our town. Granting a variance would do substantial justice. Uh, I, I don't see any law uh, that would in any way uh, outweigh the benefit to the homeowner. Granting the variance would not diminish the values of surrounding properties. I think it's very hard to make a case if there would have any impact on the surrounding properties, which are very largely uh, high density uh, development, uh, either with the condominium units that are in the same zone or the Juniper uh, plot that is uh, right next door, clearly visible uh, from this lot. Uh, there is no change in the external uh, structure, and so really, for the most part, uh, this this would, uh, granting this variance would not even be uh, visible, uh, have a visible impact of any kind on the surrounding properties. Uh, literal enforcement of the provision of the ordinance would result in an unnecessary hardship. I think we can take that in the sense of looking at the conditions of the neighborhood, whether or not granting this variance would substantially alter the character of the surrounding area. And in this case, because of where this lot is located, in close proximity to both the condominium and the other high density development uh, that is right next to it, I do not see this altering the, the uh, basic character of the surrounding properties, of the surrounding area. Uh, and therefore, I believe this criteria is satisfied. Do you have anything to add? Yes, uh, I'll add uh, that uh, the uh, proposed use does not conflict with the implicit purpose of the ordinance, and it doesn't threaten public health, safety, or welfare, or otherwise injure, injure public rights. Uh, the applicant to the the benefit to the applicant here is not outweighed by any potential harm to the public. Um, for the the hardship, 
the pr determine the purpose of the zoning restriction in question is in terms of air, light, and space, and in this case, all of that would be uh, preserved and maintained. Um, and then uh, I'm reminded of, uh, I, I wish I could remember the specific case law, but uh, the, there is also a precedent for hardship where if other similarly situated properties in the area, regardless of the district, uh, if they're uh, in proximity to a property and they're do, they have other similar non-conforming uses, uh, that can be a hardship on the property. And I think that would uh, apply here. Thank you. Does anybody have anything to add before we call for a vote? No? Okay. Then I will start with you, Ms. Record. Yes. Okay. <laughs> a heartfelt yes. Ms. Keffer? Uh, yes. Mr. Mano? No. Ms. Marcheson? No. Mr. Rossi? Yes. Mr. Matson, Yes. And the chair votes yes. So you are approved. Okay, the next request is... Can we take a break? It's oh, I'm sorry. We are going to take a five-minute, ten-minute break. We'll be back soon. Thank you for your patience.
Property. Okay, we are back in session. Welcome back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the request of John Heath and Michael Meserve, owners for property located at 955 Woodbury Avenue, whereas relief is needed to construct a shed, which requires a variance from section 10.571 <coughs> to allow an accessory structure to be located closer to a street than the principal building. Said property is located on Assessor Map 219, Lot 33, and lies within the single residence B district. Is there anyone to speak to this? Hello, I'm John Heath. Hello. I, I've been at the property for 24 years. Um, so basically, we're looking to buy a shed 16 by 10 feet and put it in back of the house. Um, apparently, because we have frontage on two streets, we have to get a variance. Um, so the shed is going to be used for storage. Uh, currently, our basement, the, uh, the door is 24 inches wide. So getting large furniture down there is impossible. So we, we really need storage for our outdoor stuff. Um, the distance from Fairview to the shed will be 45 feet. Okay. Uh, and there's a line of Arbor Vitae that pretty much hides it from the road. So the only person seeing it will be our neighbor. Um, and I've spoken with her, and she didn't seem to have any opposition. Um, what other details can I give you? It's going to be 9 feet 8 inches high with white vinyl siding to match the house. Um, and we'll be sitting on concrete blocks. And is there any other information I can give you? You have an opportunity to speak to <coughs> the criteria that we will be judging you on, okay. if you would like to do that. OK. OK. Do you have them? I think that's it. That's all. Oh, OK. Uh, that's all, yeah, all right. Yeah. That's absolutely fine. OK. I do have a question in that case. Yes. Uh, are we at that point now? We are. Thanks. So um, I understand uh, the Arbor Vitae. Actually, when I was on Fairview uh, Drive looking for your house, it was quite an effort to, <laughs> to find it. <laughs> because, I mean, you don't have a driveway or anything on Fairview. It's, it's, well, there is a gravel driveway. There, oh, there is? So that's There yours. is, yeah. OK. Yeah. Um, anyway, it's tough to see your house. But just out of curiosity, like the other places where you could put the shed that would be compliant would be closer toward Woodbury Avenue, right? So if you look at that diagram, like if you move the shed up, almost like parallel to your house, yeah, right over there, okay. that would be compliant. Why couldn't it go in a compliant location? Okay, can you point again exactly? I'm sorry, if you leave the, take the I'm sorry, you need to take please. the microphone, sir. Stephanie, you know what I'm, where I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah. You could put the little hand there. Is that where it is right now? Is that in the right spot? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be a compliant location? I think it is compliant. Like where the little hand is? Yeah, there's actually, there is a shed right here already that has the lawnmower and snowblower and kayaks and everything else. So this would be a secondary shed. Where is the shed now? Uh, it's I actually saw, right, it it's actually it would be right next to the new shed. So it's, it's right here. But the new shed then could go on the other side, like the front side of the old shed, and still be compliant. I'm just trying to figure out why you have to put the shed in a non-compliant location. Um, well, I was actually told by somebody I spoke to in the planning department that there was, there was no compliant location because it has to go behind the house, um, and it had something to do with the frontage on, on both sides of the street. There was like no way I could put it anywhere, So next basically. to the house would not be. It wouldn't? No, because it would still be, oh, I guess. Uh, no, that's it, true. It would be possible said, if right? it was between the front and the back of the right. house, on the side of the house, but also beyond the side but you were told setback. there wasn't a compliant place. For it, it would be challenging, potentially. Yes. Yeah. So my understanding is the issue is 
that you can't have an accessory uh, structure, which the shed is, this new shed, that's closer to the road than the main right. building. And you're right, you could move the shed closer to Woodbury, I guess, so that it, but uh, that's why he's asking for a variance. But the main building. Yeah, well, you have to keep in mind, there, there are a line of huge trees that go along oh. here. So, I mean, it would be almost impossible. I, I would never want to remove them. Yeah. Understood. And then what about for, the other oh, side of the property? On this side here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is another line of trees. There's trees all along the side of both sides of my property. You can kind of, yeah, you can see it from here. Here yeah. is the one the empty trees. spot where it would work to put. And again, it's 45 feet from the road with arborvitae. Hiding yeah, that, the, that's why I couldn't answer my own question about where else the shed could go because I, I couldn't really see. <laughs> yeah, if you saw the whole it. property, you would understand. Yeah. yeah okay. Thank uh, you. Are there other questions? Yes. What is that other structure in the back then? That other little gray box? I think that's a picture. Shed. 150. Is that the current shed? Oh, this thing is, uh, no, this is non existent. There used to be a shed here many 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 years ago and apparently they still have it on the drawing so there's nothing here what we're asking about is the little shed that's included in your packet is that the is that a picture of what's going to be or is that a picture oh that, that's what's going to thank be you. yes yes sorry thank you and the the picture of the chain link fence that's your side neighbor yes and that's where we're looking to put the fence opposite the swing set that you see there and that's the person who is frontage on Fairview Drive? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Are there other questions? Thank you. You're welcome. Is there anyone in the public who would like to speak in favor of this petition? Is there anyone in the public who would like to speak in opposition to this petition? Is there anyone who would like to speak to, for, or against? Okay. And the public hearing is closed. Mr. Mantle? Make a motion to uh, approve the application as presented. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Um, for me, this is a small ask. Uh, frankly, it shouldn't be, even be here. He's putting a shed in his backyard. Um, there's plenty of room, plenty of coverage. The hardship is, for me, is that even though this is Woodbury Avenue, Fairview Drive is considered his front yard as well. So unlike most people, he's got his front yard is his front of the house and his back of his house. And that's the only relief he's requesting here. Variance from 10.571 to allow an accessory structure to be closer to A Street than the principal building. Um, yeah, so as far as the criteria goes, 10.233.21, granting the variance would not be contrary to the public range. It would not. Uh, granting the variance dot two two granting the variance would observe the spirit of the audience. It would. Uh, ten dot two three three dot two three granting the variance would do substantial justice. Again, um, we're talking about a shed that's still forty five feet from the road. Um, plenty of people all over Portsmouth would want a lot this big. Um, Dot two four, granting the variance would not diminish the value of the surrounding properties. It would not. And the big one, two five, little enforcement of the provisions of this ordinance will result in unnecessary hardship. A, the property has special conditions that distinguish it from other properties in area. Well, it does have special conditions because according to the city of Portsmouth, it has two streets. This is even this is even more so about a corner lot, I and mean, I get that, but this is two streets. You know, if the address is Woodbury Avenue, then Fairview shouldn't be shouldn't be an issue. But according to ordinance, it is. Um, 
Again, the property does have special conditions that distinguish it from other properties in the area. I don't see anybody other with two street lots. I mean, I was thinking the house next door, but that's just unfair of you. And owing to these special conditions, an affair substantial relationship does not exist between the general public purposes of the ordinance provisions and the specific application of that provision to the property and the proposed use is a reasonable. It's a very reasonable use. Um, like I said, I mean, for a lot this size, to put it where it is, back of the front of the house, 45 feet from a road, 80 feet from the other road, yeah, this is a small request why I made the motion. Okay, thank you. Does the second have anything to add? Yeah, I just add that uh, clearly the intent of the ordinance was to not have people putting their sheds in their front yards, and the applicant here is putting their shed in the backyard, but the ordinance doesn't anticipate that the most properties uh, don't have uh, a street in their backyard also. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay, then we will take a vote. Mr. Rossi? Yes. <coughs> yes. Mr. Madsen? Yes. Ms. Morgison? Yes. Mr. Mano? Yes. Ms. Gaffert? Yes. Ms. Record? Yes. And I vote yes as well. So you have your, you have your shed. And finally, <laughs> the request of Shantar Zudima, and I hope I am not ruining your name, and Abby Zudima owners for property located at 126 Burkett Street, whereas relief is needed to demolish the existing 10 foot by 16 foot deck and replace with a four foot by six foot by four foot enclosed porch, which requires the following. One, variance from section 10.521 to allow a six foot right side yard where 10 feet is required. And two, variance from section 10.321 to allow a non-conforming building or structure to be extended reconstructed or enlarged without conforming to the requirements of the ordinance. Said property is located on Assessor Map 159, Lot 28, and lies within the General Residence A District. Hi, welcome. Hi, I'm Abby Zedema. Um, I'm used to waiting. I've married into a Z last name, so we're all good. Um, <clears throat> I was a Z growing up. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm patient. Um, so thank you for taking your time over multiple weeks to hear all of, <laughs> all of this, and uh, uh, tonight, especially tonight to hear uh, our request. Uh, we are looking to, uh, we've lived in the house since 2017, um, and the deck has been needed to be replaced since. Um, and we have spoken with neighbors over many years, and um, uh, everybody is in anticipation of this deck replacement as the roof is starting to sag on the side side porch um, and the footings are not supporting it as well. Uh, so um, with this, we would have a deck removal. Our deck is currently um, much higher. Uh, you know, it's close to, I'd say, six feet above grade. Uh, so you can access the basement door, um, which leaves it very soggy and damp down under. And so we are looking to remove that 10 by 16 area to increase airflow and sunlight in that area, uh, and as well as bringing trees and landscape into that space. With that, we want to have access to our uh, backyard. Right now, all of our doors go to the front yard with the exception of the basement, so we would like to have that access to walk out from the kitchen <coughs> right out into the backyard rather than along the small alley that we have to get through. So oftentimes, we're running around in circles. So we're looking for uh, relief from um, the setback on that side. Uh, currently, the porch, we're not looking to expand the porch any larger than it is right now. We have that six by four or seven by four roof that's sitting, um, that's currently present. We look to maintain that structure, but put in proper footings to support that roof as well as enclose that space uh, to be able to support that outward swinging door to walk out the back um, to the backyard. Um, as far as the um, conditions, um, substantial justice will be done. Um, it, the, the deck needs to be replaced and um, updated. Uh, we will be increasing or reducing the building area, increasing airflow and sunlight. Um, what else? Let's see, we can then also replace any rot that's occurring on the house. 
an overall aesthetic interest in, uh, of the property. It's not going to diminish it, it will only increase the uh, value of the properties around us. Um, it is not contrary to public interest as I've spoken to all of my neighbors abutting uh, to let them know about that. <laughs> Everybody is aware. Um, the spirit of the ordinance will be um, uh, recognized as it, we were actually reducing our, um, our uh, we're, we'll be more private by reducing our uh, you know, height in the backyard. We have a stage out back right now, so everybody sees us. Uh, we would like to be at ground level so that we could have the privacy as well as maintain our neighbor's privacy as well. Um, literal enforcement would be to move that door. Um, the door, our property, our building is set back only 10 feet, six inches, and we would not be able to access that door without putting something in that setback area. Um, so there would be a, a major change that would need to occur in order to not put anything in that area. So that's, that's what I have for you. Okay. <laughs> Thank Do you, you have questions for me? Questions? I'm not ignoring you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, very good. Thank you. Is there anyone to speak in favor of this petition? Is there anyone to speak in opposition to this petition? Is there anyone to speak to, for, or against? Okay. I'd like to make a motion to approve the variance request as presented and advertised. Okay. Is there a second? Thank you, Mr. Middle. Okay. Uh, well, this is a very logical uh, variance request uh, that will improve the uh, improve the structure and the soundness of the structure. Uh, it will not increase the degree of noncompliance uh, with the side yard uh, setback. Therefore, uh, and it will not change the use of the property. Since it is not changing the use of the property, it's consistent with the uh, with the uh, spirit of the ordinance for this zoning district. Uh, the granting of the variance would do substantial justice, as there is no loss to the public uh, based on the improvement of this property. It will be visible from the street, but it will be a, a visual improvement, uh, and therefore, it's actually a gain to the public. It will not diminish the values of the surrounding properties because I believe having a well-maintained structure in the neighborhood enhances the value of surrounding properties rather than diminishing them. Literal enforcement of the provisions of the ordinance would result in an unnecessary hardship. Uh, the hardship of this property is that it can't continue to be used the way it is because the side exit and the decking there is structurally unsound and presents a safety hazard and therefore literal enforcement of the provision uh, would fly against uh, the, uh, you know, the, this 10.233.25. And that's it. Okay. Thank you. Does the second have anything to add? Um, no, it's a non-conforming lot. Rarely do we get people taking down things without putting up something <laughs> really big. Um, if anything, it's making it less non-conforming. So I always appreciate that. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Okay, then we will start with Mr. Matson. Yes. Mr. Rossi. Yes. Ms. Marchison. Yes. Ms. Mannell. Yes. Ms. Ms. Geffert. Yes. Ms. Record. Yes. And I vote yes as well. Okay. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor. Aye. Aye. <laughs> <laughs>